All right, that's good. Whoever don't see it, they'll see it when I upload it on my YouTube channel. Today, I wanted to do like um, some question and answers, but I first of all want to talk about um, quantum jumping real quick. So, this is my uh, view and what has helped me in my journey. And I just wanted to share with others to help others maybe evolve and get the desires of their heart because we are all gods in this physical reality going through different stages in life where we are rising to our con Christ consciousness within us. So here we go. Quantum jumping. So first of all, we got to think back as if we're energy, which we are energy, frequency and vibration. That's really what the totality of God is, right? So we already know that energy is neither created nor destroyed, it's simply transformed. And, um, and with that understanding that energy is neither created nor destroyed, there's a beautiful thing that a lot of people just let go over their head. So if energy is neither created nor destroyed, that means any desire that we could possibly think of already exists in the physical reality because everything's already been created. <laughs> so if it already exists in the uh, physical reality, that means we have to attune our energy to that state of being so we can have it. And so that's basically what quantum jumping is for me. It's jumping to that state of being mentally with my mind. This is why I feel in the biblical text that it says, let this mind be in you, the renewing of the mind. Think it not robbery to be equal with God, things like that. So with that being said, in order to quantum jump, you're doing this through thought. And we've done it maybe before and didn't realize where we just pretty much just zoned out. Like maybe when we was in school, in class, or whatever, maybe sometimes at work, you just zone out and you, you're there physically at work or in the class, but mentally you're somewhere else. So that's what you do when you have a desire. It's like the same tactic. If you have a desire, you go from the state of being, from this now state of being where you are wanting it to the state of having it already. And so wanting it, sometimes we sit in the physical reality wanting and suffering. And the reason why we wanna to go to the having of it is because if we're sitting there wanting it, really we're attracting the lack there of it. It's like, we're not, we're not in the, I guess the proper frequency, so to speak, of having it because we're wanting it and all we see is a lack. All we see is what's in front of us. All we see is the physical reality. And so this bypass suffering, this bypass the why can't I be rich or when am I gonna get the job kind of feeling. You really just forsaking everything in the physical reality mentally through your thought and going to the state of being, of having it. And in order to get over there, well, when you get over there rather, you use your five senses as if you're experiencing that thing right now. So instantly, we can do that right now. I can do that right now. Like say for example, I wanted to be in another city or whatever. I could imagine in my mind that I'm doing my life right now in that other city, in that other state of being. So, or in a new house, for example. If I wanted a new house, I could imagine that I'm doing my life in my new house right now mentally through my human imagination or late at night when i'm about to go to bed and my eyes are already closed you get into this state of being where you're quantum jumping where you're laying in your bed in your bed of your physical reality but you pretend it's almost like pretending like that you're there already so you're laying underneath the cover but using your human uh, human imagination and saying this cover feels so comfortable. You know, you're using the five senses. I mean, the five senses. You imagine yourself getting up from underneath the covers and you're feeling the carpet between your toes. You imagine yourself walking in the kitchen and you see maybe a banana or apple and you imagine touching it, picking it up and tasting it. You can smell the newness in your, in your human imagination of the new cherry wood uh, 
cabinets that's up in there. Yeah. You know, you could imagine how you decorated it and, and you know, you're just at all of the art that you created in the house. So you have to use the smell it, taste it, see it type senses in order to be in that state. And that's how, quant what quantum jumping means to me. And this is why I believe in the biblical text that they talk about coming to God as a child, not making it to the kingdom unless you come as a child because children already know how to use that side of themselves, how to jump into that state of being and use their imagination and have their little imagine, ma imaginary friends and things like that in their mind because all is mental. And we draw things to us based upon our thoughts, based upon our spoken word. And so the, during the day, during, during the day, you can be thankful of it. You can jump over there during the day at work, at night, whatever you can. But so what you're doing here is you creating momentum back to the energy side of it all. You're creating momentum. The energy is increasing and you're, you're, you're taking away your focus from the physical, the, the wanting of it, and you're bringing your focus to the having of it. And so the feelings going to come. You know how they always say you got to be happy, you got to be this. No, you don't have to be happy to manifest because you think about the days when you had bad days, you created more than shitty bad day later on in the day because it got shittier as the minutes went on. You don't have to be happy. You have to use those five senses to get there. And then the feeling of abundance, the feeling of being a homeowner, the feeling of love or whatever it is you're wanting is going to come because you're forsaking the physical reality. And so you got to get to a point in your journey where whatever it is that you are wanting, <laughs> it feels so much better to be in that state of mind because it feels good to you. It's like you're forsaking the physical reality for a moment mentally. You say, no, this is, this is my old thoughts and I'm not going to stay here with my old thoughts because your old thoughts probably be maybe you didn't have enough money. But if you jump over, do a quantum jump over to after you've obtained the money, after you've won the lottery or whatever it is that, that's going to get you the money, you go to that state of being after and you have your, your mansion or whatever it is that you was going to do with your money, that brings peace to you. Because we be wanting things in a physical reality because we think we're going to feel a certain way after we get them. So you basically jumping over there saying, I already have it. And at your lowest point when you when you're getting sad, now you now you can take that sadness that you was experiencing because you were sitting there wanting and you could feel it have it having it already. And so that's how I look at um the quantum jumping. But it is really important. I'm going to stress this here part about self-concept. A lot of people, we could create. We could create anything we want if we put our mind to it because we're master manifestors here in the physical reality. But I'm going to stress to you how important it is to have a great self-concept. And I don't, I don't talk about people, but I'm going to mention some names of some people and not to say anything negative about these people. But when I mention these names, I'm going to, you're going to realize what I mean about self-concept. There are people that we know that maybe you know, famous, so to speak, that didn't really have real good self-concepts about themselves. So what I'm saying here is you could have everything. You could get all of the money. You could have everything, but still have nothing inside. So this is why self-concept is really important if you're going to quantum jump, because if you can't, if you wobbling, when you get those things, you could be unstable in your ways and some, you know, a little turbulence happen, which you can fix that. You can recreate it. But I'm just saying you want this to be a smooth transition. And when I say that, I can think about um, maybe um, Kim Kardashian, so to speak. The wobble in the relationship, you know, the moments when maybe Whitney Houston with the wobble with the addiction. You see what I'm saying here? So you don't want to have that wobble when you finally manifest the things that you want. You want to be able to work on your self-concept, even like a, maybe a Vivica Fox for the matters of maybe love too. So I'm sharing this with you as far as self-concept. It is so important that you rewrite that story first. Or even while you're doing this here, um, Quantum Leaping, make sure you're rewriting a story. Make sure the little girl or the little boy inside of you is fully healed. Because they even have people in the physical reality that have been, um, that came up on money and they lost it all. Because they couldn't keep, they couldn't maintain it. You know, a lot of people could get to that frequency, but you want to be able to maintain it when you get there too. So make sure your self-concept is up to par. And um, 
And that's all I got to say. So I wanted to get to the, like I said, I wanted to do um, question and answer, but that particular topic was my take on quantum jumping and, and the benefits of things that it has brought into my life. Um, so I want to do like question and answers and read these comments, two minute questions, and I'll try to do like three minute answers for um, various topics that I've been seeing in my, um, on my uh, comment section, but I haven't been able to answer all of them. A lot of them was really pertaining to quantum jumping. So if you have a comment or want to come up, if you have more than a thousand um, followers, you could come up in the box. Let me see what they got up in here. Hi, beautiful. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Okay, please tap this. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Auntie. God is all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Love and light. I appreciate it. Okay. So they don't have any questions up in here. Okay. Well, if there are any more questions, that's really all that I wanted to talk about was quantum leaping Um, on here. Wait a minute. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Um, Finesse, Finesse Goods, is that? Oh, look at Rasta Melanie up in here. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Hey T, thank you for being here. I really appreciate y'all being here. So Sam, do you have any questions? Go ahead. Go ahead, Miss LaQuette Beauty Salon. <laughs> How do I quantum jump into my new home? That's really the example that I was sharing with you a minute ago. So outside of what I was sharing, if you didn't hear that part, it's, you, it's you're using your human imagination, like I said, using the senses of being there already. You could even begin to pack up where you are. Things that you haven't used in a while, start packing. You know, it's like, because the subconscious mind really doesn't know if what you are doing is happening right now or if you're imagining it. So you are tricking the subconscious mind, but at the same time, it has to yield to you those experiences that you're putting in there because at the same time you're asking and the blessings of God are yea and amen. You're asking through thought. So I would say another thing too to do would be maybe to maybe touch up the places if you're about to, I don't know if you're renting or whatever, if you're about to leave it, touch up your little nicks and necks, you know, with paint, start packing, start buying stuff, you know, like little small trinkets of how you're going to decorate your new living room. You know, I would, I would, if it were me, I would go riding around maybe in the neighborhood or area that I desire and just imagine that's already my neighbors. Imagine everybody know me, blow the horn at a stranger in that particular neighborhood. If you know where you want to go, blow the horn at the people over there and be like, Oh, that's my good neighbor. You know, if you see him picking up the newspaper or picking up trash, Oh, he does this all the time. I saw him the other day. And so you just get into that state of being. It's you just jump into whatever it is that you desire as if you have it already. And it's yours. Because <laughs> we always get what we are asking for. Today I visited the neighborhood I see myself in. That's perfect. That's perfect. That's how you do it. That's really how you do it. With anything that you're desiring, once you've quantum jumped into a new life, you want you can use the energy if it's caused you to lose it. Wait a minute, let me see that. Once you've jumped into a new life, you want can the energy of others cause you to lose it? No, if not, if you, especially if you don't believe in that. I don't believe that um, where I am in my physical reality, and I'm not trying to be like all of that per se. Uh, I just know who I am and know that what my mind is capable of. And in my knowing, in my mind, I don't believe the beliefs of others outside of me can mess with my reality for where I am. But there are people that do believe that. But a belief is something that you done told yourself over and over again and it became a law for you. And so now you have this law in your program. Now, I'm not saying you, but people, they'll have this law in their program where others can touch them. My laws and my program don't work like that there. You know, just like, for example, somebody be like, oh, so-and-so did voodoo on me or whatever. No, so-and-so can't mess with me. Not in my law, not in my mental, not the way that my program is set up for me. 
and and so and this is also what the biblical text was talking about the christ conscious one nothing shall by any means harm you when you get to a certain stage of life of christ consciousness nobody outside of you should be able to mess with you no because you believe it and you know but i also at the same time believe that you can get to a point where you are the christ conscious one where you can because of your higher belief, because it's just frequency we're dealing with and energy we're dealing with. Because of your higher belief, you can manipulate lower energy beings. I believe that. But so if you are basically on a low frequency, mm, that happens in the physical reality right now. If you think about like um, maybe the government per se, which is something like outside of you, you know, they have people in your reality that are really, you know, being controlled underneath that umbrella and really afraid of everything that happens on the news and do exactly what everybody say to do like the doctor or you know whoever they're afraid of they're manipulated by it but i don't i don't subscribe to that way of living or thinking <laughs> not unless we believe that exactly it's your belief so and if you have that belief where you think somebody outside of you can manipulate you you could change it you could change your belief whenever you're ready you could change it just like you change your um self-concept kind of like tell just like you got that belief by telling yourself over and over wash your brain the other way because that brain wash you wash your brain the other way and tell yourself the very opposite of that is true like no nobody can mess with me i'm invincible no, my energy is too high. I'm I'm already in my Christ consciousness mode. I'm protected. If you're in religion, uh, you could use Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Sinclair with their swords dipped in the blood to, you know, to fight for you. It, it doesn't matter what walk of faith or whatever you ha you have. If you work black magic or whatever, you could write down your spoken word on a piece of paper and um bind it you know do a spell as if you're protected you write it down on a piece of paper and you fold that piece of paper away from you and you're saying mentally this is all just energy you're saying mentally away from me away from me you can harm me you can do no harm to me like and you burn it up put it in the freezer whatever where it's frozen and it can't be unloosed and can't touch you whatever your method of doing it rewrite the story so your program wouldn't be like that no more that's what i would do <laughs> let's see thank you for that oh thank you thank you thank you miss b and soul i appreciate you being here thank you you broke that down perfectly okay i share i share reprogram how do we practice self-concept so um you can change it hey chrome goddess thank you for being here the kara the Kara Mori says, how do we practice self-concept? Self-concept, the way that you practice it is, is, is like telling yourself a new story of yourself. Your self-concept is really how you, what you believe about yourself. And that is so important for you to have a belief about yourself. You know, it's, it's, it's what that inner voice is saying to you. It's saying it to you when you're talking to other people, like if somebody was in your face, in my face right now, and, and they're talking to me and I'm not, I'm listening to them, but I'll, I'll have an inner voice. And, and sometimes that inner voice for some people will be like, oh, he, he, he's probably here. She's probably looking at my acne or, oh, I'm so, oh, I don't have my makeup on. I'm so ugly and I'm uncomfortable, whatever that that is about rewriting story so self-concept you get those little negative beliefs about yourself when you have an old story that you picked up maybe from somebody picking on you years ago maybe because you wasn't chosen in a relationship years ago you don't feel sexy enough or beautiful enough or all kind of reasons so rewriting that story and giving yourself a new story and telling yourself you are beautiful and everything is okay, you know, and, and you are chosen, you are lovable, you are perfect. You begin to see yourself through the eyes of God. That really, really helps. Because if you if you keep take the people out of the equation and realize that all is God experiencing itself, and, and God, the energy of God is the energy of love. 
And so you look at yourself as being lovable because God loves you. You are chosen because God has chosen you. And, and in the biblical text, it says, I reign on the just as well as the unjust. And you know that you are creator creating. So you can manifest things. You can still create regardless of what you look like in this physical body. You know, if, it, if we're talking about looks here. So regardless of what I look like, I'm still God having a human experience. And you just buffer it by giving yourself new spoken words, new inner dialogue to tell yourself. And you begin to believe it because like I said, before a belief is something that you told yourself over and over again and so you're saying this to yourself over and over again what really could help you with is listening to affirmations you know affirmations in the beginning a lot of people fall off affirmations because they really begin to get triggered it really be the reprogram of the of the subconscious mind because the subconscious mind likes to keep you on repeat of your old program and so sometimes it's hard to get over that that hump of a new beginning of a new program and so that's the people that really need to persist especially when in your ear if you hear something on the on, on the affirmations that says that you're lovable and you come up with a thought that inner thoughts and no i'm not well so and so left me and, and it's saying that you're chosen you're like no 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 i'm not um he didn't want to be with me when you hear those things that's when you really need to persist on it more than anything because it's your subconscious mind letting you know hey i don't believe that crap you didn't program me like that there so working on your self-concept to a point where when you hear affirmations you're like yeah oh yeah i am beautiful i am lovable i i do draw people to me everybody wants to be around me you know and, and you and it'll become your law it becomes your new belief and so these are the things that we need to really really work on when trying to manifest really anything because everybody you could you could lie to people in the physical reality and tell them anything but you can't lie to your universe you can't lie to your subconscious mind because it already knows how you feel about yourself and so how you feel about yourself is really sending a signal out to everybody else we're receiving your signal you know you might think all of that time you spent doing the uh, makeup in the bathroom that we really see that and that's why we're coming over there by you no 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 we're coming over there or we're repelled by you because of the signal that you're sending out to us no matter how pretty you are no matter how beautiful your your eyelashes or you know your eyebrows and airbrushed eyebrows or whatever you do to your face and all that it is the signal that you're sending to not just us <laughs> so your manifestations too are you ready for them are you in the state of being where you feel like you already have it because that's how you get more of it but if you're feeling like you're lacking it and wanting it you're gonna get more of the lack of the wanting because the blessings of god are yea and amen based upon the state of being that you're already in and so we get to these states and we ask why me? Why am I constantly going through this here over and over again? Because you are still in that state of being. And so you think the trick is, oh, I had messy people on my job. So I'm going to change my job. I'm going to go because these people out here is messy. And I'm going to go get this other job. Up, oh, they're messy too. You go to the next job. Up, oh, they're messy too. No, you never change the signal. It's not those people. <laughs> it is a signal that you're emitting. It's something inside of you that's, that's showing you your reflection everywhere you go. You can't run away from you because you are all that exists in your universe. They have multiple universes, but in your universe, you're God. You're the creator of all in your universe. And everybody that comes forth in your universe is really just showing you what signal you putting out to the universe. And you're wondering why, because the self-concept is something people just want to overlook. They don't want to do that part because that means you got to work on yourself. That means you got to go into the wilderness and sit there and, and meet God face to face. But a lot of people don't want to do that. There. They just want to go get a new car. They want to go get a new guy friend. They want to go get the new job instead. Because that seemingly in the physical, they're so used to the physical, that seemingly going to fix it. That seemingly is going to put the band-aid on it. They don't want to go up in here. And then religion already taught a lot of us going up in here is the devil and 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 and, and, and you don't want to go into the darkness because all kind of entities and demons are going to come out anything that comes out of that you put it there <laughs> so you really need to get it out there to release to purge from it so that you can start your new state of being 
Okay, I went too far on that when I got caught up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me see. I know they got a lot of things up in here. Let's see. How do, okay, I answered that one. You change it. Where are you from? I love your accent. <laughs> Thank you. I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. It is your story and not what others label you. Yes, exactly. All is God. Hey, crow. Okay, let's see. Hello. Hey, Dion. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Everything that you experience is yours. Yeah, it really is. And you have to be accountable for your energy. We have so many people in the physical reality that sit there and they say, you know, so-and-so triggered me. Yeah, so-and-so triggered me. Like, so, so for example, if somebody came on this live and told me that I was an SHIT, if somebody was to tell me that in physical reality or on this live right now, I'd be like, oh, okay. I wouldn't get triggered by that because I know who I am. I am who I say I am. <laughs> I've already seen God face to face. I've already been inside of my self. So they got not going to trigger me. So if a person can trigger you in the physical reality, they triggering you because, oh, ouch. Some of that was up in there. Some of that was already up in there <laughs> because you triggered it. And really and truly, like when we're in a relationship with like a guy, for example, you know, like if he... If he um, do something that we say he triggered me about, like he looked at another lady ace or something <laughs> while y'all was together and you got triggered. When we fuss at that man and we say to him that he triggered us, what we're really saying is, you know what? You really are making me feel bad right now because I never got over my shitty self, low self-concept. I never went inside of me to work on me. So I'm going to tell you that you need to stop doing that thing in the physical reality that you just did. You need to stop looking at asses when you, when you are with me because it really makes me feel some kind of way. I have to blame you for it. I'm going to blame you and you, you got to fix you because I don't even know how to fix me. I'm not going to go in here and fix me. I'm not going to go in here and have higher self-concept than what I, I have right now. It is your fault and I want you to do something about it. That's what we're saying. That's what we're saying when we get triggered by other people because it always, it started within you. And so the guy might be like, man, you tripping, you bugging. Because in my opinion, this is just my opinion, men to me seemingly know how to stay in alignment. They know, and so to speak, they know how easily to bring out the little boy inside of them is what I'm saying. I've seen grown men, you know, get excited about the little, I think it's PSP, the little game on here on TikTok and stuff like that. You know, they, they play basketball. They'll go work out or whatever. They'll go hang with the boys or whatever. They know how to get into that state of being, using that human imagination, letting that little boy come out to play and have fun. But women, we seemingly, we look, seem like we be losing that sometimes in comparison. This is just my opinion. But what I'm saying is nobody can trigger you for something that's not already inside of you. And the universe constantly show you you and what's inside of you. You're supposed to be dealing with every part of you. The doubt and Thomas part of you, if you see him, you know, the unwavering faith that Peter have, if he shows up, the one that's going to um, forsake you, if he shows up, every a uh, parable in that biblical text was just telling you a state of being that you're going to be in before you get to the Christ conscious one. And you got to deal with all of them in order for you to rise, in order for you to be resurrected again. Let's see. Accountability, personal. Let me say, wait. Personal accountability. No, you didn't. <laughs> what? My example, you said, Rasta Melody, you said that mama oh hey that's my mama my mama in my life y'all thank you for being here hi new here what is your youtube name please salt of the earth publishing is the youtube channel i'm under it's in the um profile link here on tiktok you could easily find it that way i am who i say i am definitely definitely look at the other woman what <laughs> you didn't hear me crawl you better preach in here, God. It's just be thank you. But yeah, seriously, instead of that woman, for example, saying, oh yeah, she is hot. You know, in her inner voice, she don't have to say it outside to the guy. She is hot. She is sexy. She is beautiful. Whatever she, you know, looks like based upon the glimpse that she saw her partner, you know, giving that other woman. 
instead of saying that in her inner voice and clearing that energy and staying with her positive self-concept and knowing that she's because she's worked on her self-concept already so she knows she's beautiful she knows she's lovable you know she know that he's a man she know that even when nice men pass by she look at them and, and instead of doing that no it's his fault no because i was cheated on in my past and you just triggered me and I'll, how dare you trigger me because I never healed that wound that I had inside of me for being cheated on. I felt like I was unworthy. I felt like I was unlovable back then. And look at you, looking at her, now I feel unlovable all over again. How dare you? That's what we be saying. And that's why I feel like men be saying we tripping. Because I, I, as I look at it, I feel like that is somebody tripping and not being accountable for who they are. And how they acting and responding to, to situations. Because you would not be triggered at all. If it ain't something in there that made you go, ooh, ouch. <laughs> I'm just speaking my truth, yeah? All right. So, I just love hearing you say it with your accent. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chrome. You better preach. That's beautiful. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, I don't say she, she, she be tripping, BB. Yeah, yeah. I feel seen so good. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful place to be in when you really know who you are. And when you're, I call it, and excuse the way I put it, getting to a point where you're unethical with your energy. And you know, I, I've been through a lot of things to get to this place though. I've been through some things, so I'm not trying to be heartless as far as feminine energy is concerned or anything. You know, my mom is here. I used to be a big crybaby, but she'll, she'll attest to that. But I've gotten to a point in my journey where I know how to deal with my issues. I know how to deal with my feelings. I know how to deal with the totality of me. I know that I could jump out and I let myself cry when I have to, if I have to. But at the same time, I'm not going to go around pointing my finger at my reflection saying that it is their fault. Because I know that I create through thought. I know what my thoughts are. And if we be real with ourselves and we look at our physical reality, man, I thought that up. That's what we'll say. The amount of money that I have in my bank account right now, yeah, I thought that up. I know I did. Where I live right now, I thought this up. You know, everything, every part of our, the job I have, I thought it up. And if you're accountable with every part of your life, you'll realize you're in a state of being based upon your thoughts. You think about them old relationships. Yeah, I thought that up, that it'll end. Yeah, I thought it up. If you were cheated on or whatever happened in it, oops, I did. I thought it up. Cause I didn't feel worthy. Oops, I did. Because I had a low self-concept about myself. Oops, I did. Because I had gained a little weight and I felt fat and I thought he would look upon another woman and that she would be prettier to him. Oops, I did that. And, and that's a beautiful place to be. Because you're never getting this thing called life wrong anyway. You're always winning and learning. It's a beautiful place to be when you can become accountable for, for your thoughts. Because just like you become accountable, now you're aware of them. And when they come at you in the same way, you could be like, oh, wait, hold up. We're not going to think that no more. Because that's the kind of thought that I was thinking when I was in a relationship with such and such. And it ended. I don't want this one here to end. So I'm not going to have that shitty thought concept with me no more. I'm going to renew my mind. I'm going to renew my mind. And I'm not going to be wobbling with my mind either. I'm going to be stable with my thoughts. Because people feel my, my wobble because I am still energy. And they'll feel my wobble. Then I'll have a wobbly relationship. Then I'll have a long on and off relationship because my thoughts are wobbling. And I wonder why, why we off and on because my mind was wobbling. No, I'm going to have a steady pace. I'm going to think it's not robbery to be equal with God. I'm going to let this mind be in me. I'm going to draw things to me. I'm going to be so in alignment with me. That if I be lifted up, if I put myself back up on this pedestal and feel good about myself and have this beautiful self-concept about myself, that I know that I will be able to draw anything to me. The desires of my heart, finally, I'll be able to draw them to me instead of them running away from me. Because I was in the negative concept arena for far too long. 
I used to do that, especially when I was in religion, begging Jesus to save me. And, you know, I talk a lot here in the past about, you know, herbs and stuff, because as a little girl, I used to always be sick. I used to always be sick. And I, I went on a journey of health and wellness and I, I just took my whole, my whole thought process, my whole life, just studying, researching and trying different herbs and stuff. <laughs> But for the most part, if I look over my journey, it was some thoughts. It was that hurt. <laughs> because at the same time, the thoughts, the negative thoughts, the real shitty ones, the ones that we hold on where we don't want to forgive people and we don't want to love people, those things bring build up acid inside of our body. Those are the real things that's causing the sickness and disease in our body. And they're coming forth in the physical reality. It ain't the fool like the people in the physical reality think. It's them shitty thoughts. It's that low concept. I've been there. <laughs> I remember that day. I'm not there no more. All is mental. This, this thing called life is a mental game. Play to win. Play to win. And be unequitable with your energy in every walk of life let's see where i left off at i have an issue with manipulation how do i heal manipulation could you um tell me more about that so is it better to be unbothered but cut people off when you try to with your energy being unbothered but cut people off in the beginning of my um my journey my mom's here actually i cut my family off <laughs> but it wasn't that nobody in the family was like um hurting me it was just that i was on a journey to reprogram my mind and it was the same peace be still you know peace be still to to other people projecting their thoughts on me peace be still to tv peace be still to to the news peace be still i have to I want to reprogram my mind to the way that I want it to be. Peace even be still to all of the research that I had done. You know, you get to a point in your journey where you've read all of these different books about consciousness, of quantum physics, about energy, and, and then you got to put the books on the side and say, okay, okay, what part of this am I going to take for me? And what part am I going to spit out? So <laughs> I was unbothered with what anybody had to say. Because it was all about who I say I am. It was about how I felt and what my internal GPS was sending me a signal to reprogram my thoughts on. And it's really, really not, I don't want to say too much of a reprogram, but stepping outside of the box into this boundless universe, you know, and, and, and seeing things from a bigger picture. And when doing that, yes, it's being unbothered, being unbothered with anything outside of you knowing wait hold up i need to do this time out to sort out the issues inside of here i can't dwell on this here outside of here this here is gonna work itself out when i fix this here this here inside of me this and this inside of me the way that i feel and the things that i i um think of the spoken word that comes out of me all of this here inside of me is the most important thing because when i change everything outside of me gonna change anyway. Everything happens, it starts in the spiritual realm first, inside of you, in your universe first, before it can manifest and come forth in the physical. So yes, being unbothered with the physical is the perfect place to be because I have to focus on the inside. This is what Jesus did in the allegory text. He would always, in those parables, be on top of the mount. He would often say he was going up to the top of the mount to pray. He was handling the manners of what's going on in here. <laughs> he was being about the father's business. So yeah, that's a beautiful place to be. Being unbothered. Being unbothered. Let's see. Yes, she was instead of letting it trigger you. Exactly. Let's see. They now respond. I have an issue with manipulation. How do I heal? Let me see what Mel's saying on this. Did she say something else? I don't see nothing. Absolutely, I cut people off. Yeah, you could. You could. If it makes you feel better, do that. Do that. If it makes you feel better, do that. 
but I'm the reason why I, I did a video and I, I was talking about, you know, not blocking people dealing with it because at one point in your journey, you got to face yourself and those people are yourself, you know, and you know, in my journey, <laughs> in my past, rather, I used to be a, a blocker, a runner. I ran away from so many situations, just block. They used to call me, my closest girlfriend would call me Miss Walker. Because I walk away. I just was walking, walking, walking. But in my journey, the reason why I say don't block people no more is because you got to face yourself. And I had to face that side of myself. Why am I blocking? Why I can't deal? Why I can't, you know, why I get bothered? Why are they triggering me? Just, just why? In, 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 in. So you can, you can, you can block if it makes you feel good in that moment. But it's going, the universe going to send you that again. Your subconscious mind going to give you that experience again because you never really dealt with it. You think you're blocking it, and look at it from an inter energy standpoint. It's all energy, frequency, and vibration. How you blocking energy, really? And so now when people talk about blocking, I kind of like laugh about it because I'd be like, oh, okay, it's coming back. You're going to have to deal with it. It's coming back. So temporarily blocking, cool. But if you, like, say, for example, you're blocking somebody because, you know, maybe maybe they didn't treat you the way that you wanted to be treated, treated in a certain, just an example, not you exactly, but a person is blocking somebody because they didn't treat them the way they wanted to be treated well that person that they blocked name was mike so you're gonna meet joe who's just that person just a different name and the universe or your subconscious mind will give you another character because we we're supposed to be going through stages in life learning and evolving from them instead of running from them that kind of creates a little bit of resistance right there so it comes back just like that example i was telling you from one person going to one job to another it comes back again until you really deal with it. And really what you're dealing with is the part of you that maybe, the part of us, rather, I don't want to say you, the part of us that we just don't want to embrace. So that's the answer on there. Let's see if there's anything else here that I'm missing. These things move fast sometimes, yay. I'm at this stage now, yeah, allowing myself to face myself, yeah. Because you're all that exists, God, in your physical reality. You're all that exists. And it's funny how I often, every time I say that, I'm in this room and I think about the fact that I am alone in my universe. You be alone in your universe. And anybody, whether they are your husband, your, your children or whatever, <laughs> they don't exist until you give attention to them. It's really us having like a show in characters. And they're coming forth and they're doing the things that we already thought them to do when they do come forth and so like that's why when our friends when we're thinking of them and they call you you say oh i was just thinking about you isn't that funny yeah because you're god and you're creating with your little show all your little characters and they come forth on cue <laughs> it's really cool we're really that powerful it's a beautiful thing let's see um being unbothered with anything that restricts you yeah queen you better say that i'm at this stage now let's see allow myself to face myself yeah definitely because every everything outside of you is you just showing you what's on the inside so it's becoming code codependent on me yeah it's coming back because it's unsettled. Definitely. It always come back. Why didn't the comments be going fast like that? Yeah. It's coming. I didn't. I didn't tell her why though. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I mean, deal with it how it feels good to you. For for this moment, for this state of being you're in, based upon where your programming is right now. You got me screaming at the phone like I'm too conscious. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Let's see. Please. Say, oh, thank you. Thank you for telling them. You missed my second part. Oh, I did. I didn't see it. Them things, them comments go so fast. Let me go back up. Let me see if I can see that. I know you said, okay, if I feel like someone is trying to manipulate me, I get real triggered. 
Oh, okay. So, and that, that's basically from past. Yeah. And so that, that sounds like a story that needs to be written. I mean, rewritten. You know, I, I did a video on rewriting your story. So sometimes maybe somebody, uh, maybe like, you know, like little girls, I, I do consultations and a lot of women when they were younger, maybe had pe men or older people, it doesn't necessarily have to be a man that tried to manipulate them in the past. And so they resent that as they're older and it, stuck, it stays with them, you know? And so what I would tell them in the consultation is, Go back and deal with that. Rewrite the story from the moment that he tried to, I'm not saying you anymore, but that person tried to uh, molest you or take advantage of you or manipulate you. Rewrite the story before the event happened and do that story over and over. So every time you look back, you think of the new story instead and you love upon that little girl inside of you. You tell that little girl that's inside of you that it's okay. She did the best that she could at that time, but she has you now. She has you to protect her and she will not be manipulated anymore that you know now better. You know, you've learned how to fix you, your um, self-concept and that you're growing and, and you're proud of her and look at the woman that i have become because of you you talk to the little girl inside of you because it's you it's a little girl in you that's still still feeling sad still feeling afraid feel still feeling maybe unprotected that somebody else is going to try to manipulate her so as an adult we have to be accountable for the little girl inside of us too i had a little girl inside of me and i used to talk to her all the time you use your human, your, um, human imagination for that too. And just pretend that she's there with you and that you're holding her in your arms and you're, you're telling her, you know what? We didn't have a protector back then, but I'm going to protect you now. I'm going to be with you now and nobody's not going to do nothing to you because at the end of the day, we are our own savior. So sometimes we have to go within and save the little girl or little boy inside of us. We have to play imaginary friend with her sometimes. And when we're crying, go deep into the trenches of why we're crying and tell that little girl or ask that little girl, why? Why are we crying? Come here, cry yourself to sleep. I'm going to stay woke while you fall asleep on my chest. And I'm going to make sure that nobody does anything to you. I have you. You're protected. You're loved. You're seen. You're lovable. You're my favorite. Tell her what she needs to hear while you're holding her in your arms and your human imagination and cry with her. Protect her so that she will never ever feel manipulated again. And in the daytime, you, you, you're gonna begin to, if you start to do stuff like this here, you're gonna begin to feel so much better as a woman. You can really feel that woo in man, you know, in the word woman. You can really feel powerful because you've healed that, low, that lower version of yourself, the little girl. The one that was crying out, is crying out in a lot of women's life on TikTok. You could see them. I go through the little feeds of time and not in a judgmental way, because if you notice, if any of you all are my friends on TikTok, anytime I'm really replying to in any comment, I'm either putting smiley faces or laughing or telling somebody that I'm proud of them. So I'm not being judgmental with these people, but I always think to myself, oh, I see the little girl. Mm, she got to fix that. But I keep going. I keep going. But I visibly could see. I could see and feel it. And the little girls that's, that's, that's not healed. And the blood that's being shed on TikTok. Because people, grown men and women are still bleeding in the physical reality. And people that have eyes can see that. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Let me go back. Because these things. Okay, I think I went back enough. Exactly. Yes, thank you. Always winning and learning, always a teacher and always a student, always. I'm still a student. I'm sharing my experiences, but I will forever be a student and still forever evolving in my journey too. I'm not here to act as if I have it all figured out that I have it because there is no it to get. Because we live in a boundless universe that is always expanding based upon our life experiences. We give our life experiences when we go, when we pass and go to the non-physical, we give our life experience back to source energy or the divine collective consciousness, whatever you call it, to God. And God just expands and the universe gets greater and greater and greater. So I'll forever be a student and you too will forever be a student. I don't want to come forward as if I know all. I'm just sharing my experiences with you, babe. Let's see. 
Always a student. Yeah, I say, I say, let's see. Um, undefeated. Yeah, that was deep. Hey, Trey, thank you for joining, babe. I feel like someone is trying to manipulate me. I get triggered. Okay, I read that one already. Let's see. Absolutely, I cut people off. Facts. Being unbothered with anything that restricts you. Yeah, queen, you better say that. Look at Crow. She'd be ready to have church, y'all. She had church early in the day. She's still over there having church. I love Chrome. I'm at that this stage now. Yes, allow myself to face myself. Did I go too far back? Let me see. Uh, I did tell. Okay, yeah, I went too far back. You got me screaming, please. Oh, crap. The thing just jumped. Okay, I'm going to start at the bottom. Okay, thank you for tapping the screen. You got this queen. Okay, you can feel the hurt. Yeah. All right, so I don't see any more questions up in here. You got me over here speaking in tongues. Oh my God, please don't do it to a girl. <laughs> That's funny. Hug that little girl. Love on her. Definitely love on her because she's been through a lot. You know, a lot of us have some um, old stories that we didn't, we didn't, that came from childhood. Yeah. We didn't rewrite those old stories and we just walking around with those old wounds and the little girl or little boy just, just pouting with us, with us. You know, they used to, I don't know what they call it now, the terminology that they call it now, look, they used to say looking booted up or whatever by the mouth or whatever. We have that look on our face in the physical reality and we've been through some things, you know, because that little girl, that little girl's like, no, I don't wanna be happy. Talk to me. <laughs> That's what she said. Or that little boy. Man, bro, I ain't going nowhere. I ain't doing a darn thing you want me to do, bro. I need you to talk to me. You know? <laughs> men go through it, too. Men go through it, too. Men done had some issues. A lot of men didn't have their father or maybe had a half-ass father in the physical reality. A lot of men didn't don't know how to effectively communicate or speak their truth. Never even been give, given the opportunity to be heard. You know, when a conversation strike, maybe they were around feminine energy and the feminine energy took the conversation to another level where it began to be about them. And so they just kept quiet because <laughs> the feminine energy being just turned the conversation into something else. And they just learned how to just keep things inside of them. So just imagine you being free flowing energy, just housing stuff inside of you. At a point in your journey, you be about the bus, no matter who you are, woman and or man. And we all have a little boy, a little girl, and we have a story. The beautiful thing about the story, though, is that once you overcome to your higher self, you just get pride for your story. You appreciate the story then because hindsight is twenty twenty. And I would say to anybody, don't take my story away from me. Oh, I needed that story. If I didn't have that story, I wouldn't be here talking to you today. If I, if I didn't have that story, I wouldn't be able to love on myself the way that I love on myself today. No, I, I, I'm, I'm happy about my story. I'm happy because it was all purposeful. Because like I said, we're only learning and winning. We're never going to lose. Even if I time out in the physical reality, life goes on. Energy transforms. <laughs> and I'm going to still be evolving. I'm just going to come back greater. And then, then the people in that physical reality would be like, ooh, who is this? She, she must be an ancestor. <laughs> That's how that thing go. So true. I love my story. I do. I do. Let's see. I do. Hey, 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 Erica. Thank you for joining. Do I see? Can you please put this live on YouTube channel? Yeah, I will. I will put this live on my YouTube channel tonight because I didn't even put the um one from last week on it yet. I had so many consultations. I didn't have time, but I'm going to make sure I upload it tonight. Yes, let's see. You have to protect that child, you, that you felt like no one else can protect that. I'm thinking you're saying there. Yeah, you definitely do because that child has been crying out for maybe 40, 50. Some, some elders have a little child that's been crying out and they just sitting there just angry, just going to die bitter because that little girl never really got the love. Maybe they were, maybe they got married in the physical reality. Maybe they felt love out what they think was love outside of themselves from somebody. That's not it. They didn't go in. 
<laughs> they didn't go into experience the totality of love that they had to bring. They didn't show us the gift that they came for to deliver in the physical reality. And so they, they end up being miserable in their older days. Don't let that person be you that dies bitter because the little girl been pouting and nobody went to go see about that little girl. Nobody. I loved on the little girl inside of me. And people that think you crazy or whatever. That's why I tell you when manifesting, manifesting and dealing with the issues of the heart, don't be telling nobody what you're doing. Because all, all people outside of you are going to do is project your, your doubts and your fears. It's going to be like, be like you're talking to yourself, you're crazy and all this. Talk to yourself, baby. Because within yourself is the kingdom of God. Iron out the issues within yourself because within yourself, that creates a change outside of yourself. Talk to yourself. Check on that little girl, even if she ain't crying no more. Just when you lay down in the bed, just ask, are you, are you okay? How was your day today? Use your human imagination. And when you're thinking about the next trip that you want to go on, talk to her. Tell her, oh, I have an idea. How about we go to the beach this weekend? Oh, I can't wait to get to the beach. I love the sun. I love how the sun just kisses my skin. Oh, and I love the water, especially the clear water. Oh my God, we're gonna go far out. Let's go to Miami this time. Cause we went to Dustin so many times before. Let's do Miami. And then we can stop at the little store. We get a little surfboard. I don't know how to surf, do you? You know, do that. You're not crazy. You're falling in love with yourself. That's what you do. You're finding the love because really and truly you think you want love from a man or a woman. <laughs> it's your love, baby. It's your love that you want. It's your love that you're trying to find when you're going through trying to, trying to you know, be with other men, being promiscuous, even when men going with different multiple women, they're looking for themselves looking for God <laughs> let's see I love you oh I love you too crow let's see can someone share the YouTube channel it's in my profile on my um on my TikTok at the top if you go there yeah in my bio that's what I mean to say in my bio thanks Mel I appreciate that let me see oh my god I need I miss by telling people wait a minute what I miss by telling people but it feels so good learning to check in on me yeah, you gotta check in on yourself. <laughs> you gotta check in on you. Can you please tell me the name of your YouTube? Okay, that I answered that one already. Sorry, I lost connection. Okay, okay, I think I got all of them. If I didn't, I don't wanna stay long because you humans, <laughs> you humans take those for granted that um, stay too long. And I, I want this to stick with you and your mental. I want you to practice this and I don't want to give you too much at one time. I want you to be able to digest it easily. So I'm going to end this live and I'm thankful for everybody that came here. And this video is, is, is from my heart, from the things that I've been through. And, and I wanted to bless you because when you move, I move. When you expand, I expand more. And we are, oh, before I go, I want to say, we are in this state of being where the collective consciousness of everyone in different realities is on the rise. When the so-called veil has lifted, or the so-called awakening has occurred. And so I believe that we're all getting a yearning, even if we're not yearning for consciousness specifically we're yearning maybe to change our diet we're yearning maybe to learn about self-love we're yearning in so many different areas of life so it is the perfect time this is the season that they talked about in the biblical text when it said when the disciples asked jesus when will be the age or the time of thy coming this is that age the season where the christ consciousness was to come forth See, a lot of people in the biblical text, they believe it to be that Jesus was going to crack the sky. No, but it was a consciousness that was coming forward. And so we're, we're underneath that wave. And so people are yearning for this. And so, like I said, I've been doing this for a long time. People are yearning for it now more because we, we're in that, that time, that season. So by me sharing it with you, you trickle on and share with people in your, your reality. 
and it goes on and on and on and God becomes greater and greater and we all are evolving because at the end of the day it's just one God one faith one baptism and we're all singing the same song and we're all evolving at the same pace they might have them little stragglers down here that don't want to do nothing with their energy but guess what they get wiped out but they come back in that means they go into the non-physical but they come back in because we got to get this thing here we got to rise back to Christ consciousness as one because it's the body of Christ, you know how they talk about in religion, it's one body of Christ. And it's all of us <laughs> that make up that body. Okay, let me see if I missed anything. If not, I'm gonna hang this up. Can someone share it? Okay, I said that, I said that. Okay, love and blessings to you all. Greetings, beautiful. Rasta, you just getting up in here? Okay, I'm about to end it. All is God. And remember, you can be, do, and have anything that you put your mind to. Quantum jump over there to having it already. This video was from my heart to yours, baby. Be blessed.